Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Jen's Fiberweb, and I am Jen. This is a channel where I talk about cross stitch, knitting, and crochet. Um, today I have cross stitch and knitting for you. Um, I also have a giveaway winner to announce. I have some stitch alongs to discuss. Um, I have fewer whips than usual. If you caught my mid year whip parade, you will know that I'm focusing on trying to get some finishes, and that is going pretty well. So I, I do have some finishes to share with you today. Uh, so let's let's just get into it. First of all, I want to announce the giveaway winner for the PDF of A Cross Stitch of Ice and Fire, which is the pattern booklet that contains 12 patterns from real life locations where Game of Thrones was filmed. This is a booklet from Stephanie at Cross Stitch the Globe. Um, the giveaway was a few videos ago, and I drew a winner right before this. And the winner is Diane Sutton 9282. Um, so congratulations, Diane, and if you could please email me with your um, contact info, I will put you in touch with Stephanie, and she will get you that PDF. And then I will have another giveaway later in this episode, um, so stick around if you might want to enter for that. Uh, okay, so let's jump into what I've been doing. I'm going to do things a little bit different today, and I'm just going to mix in my knitting, I think, with my other stuff. So I have... Um, I have a knitting finish, two knitting finishes, I have a couple cross stitch finishes, I'll just go through all those together. But first I want to talk about my stitch alongs. So I am hosting my first two stitch alongs ever right now. Um, they both started recently, like at the end of last week. So um, one of them is the Bring Out Your Kits sale, which I am hosting with the Thread Gremlins, and the idea for that is just to pick any vintage kit, it doesn't have to be a kit, it can be a vintage pattern that you have kitted up yourself. Um, anything with a sort of uh, dated aesthetic or, you know, retro vibe um, is welcome, and whips are welcome, uh, anything you want. I was, I came up with the name because I was thinking of um, Bring Out Your Dead from Monty Python, uh, but it's Bring Out Your Kits because they're sort of dead, they're probably not in print anymore. Um, they're not the super popular shiny new things that everyone else is stitching, uh, but we would love to see what you have, what treasures you have hidden away that you've been waiting for the right time to stitch. Uh, so if you would like to participate in that, tons of people seem excited about it already and have shared some kits that they're going to bring out and stitch. Um, if you want to join in the fun, please tag me on Instagram so I can see what you've got. Um, so I will show you some of the whips that I have that are vintage kits as well as some of the things I have that I haven't started yet. Um, but first, I want to show you my other stitch along, which is the Giant Butterfly Cell. I am hosting this one with Milka of Mega Stitches. Um, it is a free Artsy Housewife pattern available on her Patreon page. Uh, you, do, you do not have to be a member, you can just go grab it if you would like to join us. Um, it has eight colors of DMC, and it's a small chart. I think it's 101 by 60 something. Um, let's see, did I write it down? I don't have it in my notes right now. But we started on the 30th of June, which was Sunday, right? Yeah, we started Sunday. So here's how far I have gotten. So this is the entire width of the chart. Um, the house still needs the roof and the chimneys, and then all that's left is the two giant butterflies. And you will see that I have changed the colors. Um, I am using the two called for green DMC colors for the light and dark green shades. Everything else is over dyed floss. And I wanted to go for more of a sort of dusk scene, like twilight scene. So I darkened my colors up a bit. And I still wanted the house to be sort of glowy. Um, my family and I took a trip down to Lake of the Ozarks a couple weeks ago, and when we were driving back, it was that sort of twilight moment where, like, the sun has gone down. We can still see things pretty well, but some things are fading into the background, and some things are still, like, sort of look illuminated, even when they're not. So that's sort of the vibe I was going for. Um, and I just chose a bunch of overdyed colors from Stash. I've got some Gentle Arts, Classic Color Works, and Weeks Dye Works all in here. Um, so yeah, that is where I'm at. I did, I did all of this 
on the f first day, I think. Uh, so I started working on it on, in the morning, and then I just worked on it throughout the day whenever I could, and this is how far I got. I think I'm probably about halfway done, because the butterflies are giant, as the title would indicate. Um, and I'm stitching this two over two on a 32 count even weave. Um, oh, that the modeling shows up really well right there, actually. It's like a warm gray with sort of reddish brown faint modeling. Um, and it's a, it's a mystery fabric that I got in a D-stash. So I'm really happy with this. It has been very fun to work on. It's like just the right amount of um, engaging, not too fiddly. Um, there are some parts where you're only stitching a few stitches in one color, but the other chunks are nearby. You don't have to like completely end your thread and start new ones constantly. So it's fun. Um, and this will be a quick stitch if you would like to join us. Please do. So, um, I have a big stack of vintage kits, but I'm going to save those for later for my other stitch along. So right now I'm going to jump into knitting. Um, so last in my last episode I was talking about, I had finished this shawl. This is called Lacy Business. It's a design by Amba O'Brien. Um, and my mom had the shawl when I filmed last. She blocked it for me. So here it is. It's kind of hard to show because it's lacy and quite see-through. But it's two colors, and I faded from... So you, you cast on right here in the center, and you start stitching back and forth, making this triangle shape. And then the darker color is slowly faded in, and then you bring the light color back at the end for this lacy uh, border. And it's very... the wingspan is quite wide. Like, it's more than six feet, I think. And it's just nice. Blue. Very light and airy and soft. It's all, um... I think I used sock yarn, so it's probably 75-25 superwash merino and nylon. And I actually... I didn't notice until I was literally binding off at the very end of this that I knit the entire thing on needles that were two sizes bigger than what was called for. I don't know how that happened. I have knit a bunch of Amba's shawl patterns and they're almost always written to use a US 5 needle and I got all the way to the bind off and usually when I'm binding off I will go up a needle size so that my bind off is not too tight. And so I went to grab a size 6 and that was smaller than the needles I had because I knit the whole entire thing on a size 7. I have no idea how that happened, why I did it. So it's a little bit more open and I also ran out of my dark color because my gauge was too large. So I had to use, I found a close match from Stash for like the very last row. So like right down here, you can't really tell, it's like a denim blue. So no one would ever know if I didn't point it out, but totally my fault that I ran out of yarn. But yeah, that was a very fun, relaxing, lacy knit with an easy to remember pattern. Like most of the lace is just um, yarn over and knit two together across the whole row for a row of eyelets. Um, and then the other knitting finish that I wanted to share is my Rainier socks. I showed these on um, Instagram already. This is a pattern by Nitty Melissa. Um, she is on Instagram and Ravelry. She is one of the moderators of the Sock Knitters Anonymous group on Ravelry, which is a giant group of sock knitters who, um, they do monthly stitch-alongs where you can enter, they pick like a designer and also a theme, and you can enter in either of those categories. And if you finish your pair of socks in the month, you're entered to win prizes. And I think it's every other month they do a mystery sock knit along as one of those themes and this was one of those so um i think we knew the name of the sock pattern so we knew it was rainira we knew it was based on house of the dragon but the way it works is like the first clue comes out and it's like the cuff and then the second clue includes the heel and the third clue is most of the foot and then the final one is the toe so you can see these socks have some Latvian braids up here, which are fun to do if you've never done before. Um, they've got a twisted rib cuff, 
and then most of it is two-stranded color work, but there are a few rows down here towards the toe where you're using three colors at once. So you can see here I've got the black, the red, and this light gray all at the same time. So some fun, challenging elements, um, but for the most part it was pretty simple. Like most, most of this two-color motif is easy to remember and see what you're doing. It's got a typical heel flap and gusset for the heel. Um, actually, no, it do, it's not typical because the gusset is on the bottom of the foot. So you get this, You usually your gusset is a triangle on each side that decreases here, but uh, Melissa did these stripes instead. So the gusset decreases happen on the bottom. So you have one triangle on the bottom of the foot. Uh, so it is a little bit different there too. But yeah, I really enjoyed these and um, I got them out to finish once House of the Dragon started because I think this pattern came out in November of last year, so they've been hanging out with me for a while. Um, I think I finished the first sock during the mystery knit along, but I didn't finish the second one. It was like halfway done. Um, so those were my two knitting finishes. And then <clears throat> I have a couple of... Let me just finish up knitting. So I have one more thing I've been working on for knitting, which is my... Plumpy, which is a shawl pattern by Andrea Mowry, Drea Renee Knits. Um, this is one of her older patterns, and it is written, you can use either, I think it's written for both fingering and DK weight yarns. So if you do the fingering weight version, you only need three colors, but for DK you need four because your yarn gets used up faster. And I actually did a stash dive for this one, and I ended up using five colors of DK I think they're all Superwash Merino. I don't know who the dyers are for all of them. And let's see if I can show this to you. So this is my shawl. This one you start in this corner and you start knitting up back and forth. So the first section is just garter in color one. And then you add in the second color and on one side of this center spine you're doing brioche and the other is two color garter stitch. So usually if you're knitting garter flat you're just knitting on the front and knitting on the back. But when you're doing it with two colors you have to knit and purl. So if you don't love purling this shawl might not be the best choice for you. So then there's another section of just garter and then another one where it's brioche and garter and then I have this hot pink. This, the hot pink color I know was from, it was a mystery yarn club based on Parks and Rec. And this color I think was called Galentine's Day. And then I have another section of brioche and garter. And I am just now finishing up the last section of all garter stitch with my purple and mint colors. And then there's one more section of brioche and then I bind off. So there are eight sections and I'm on section, I'm at the end of section seven for this. So this one should be done in the next couple of days. I would show you the yarns I'm using, but I have been completely using them up. So there are no scraps. Most of my colors are done. These are the only two that are left. This one is hazel knits, and I'm not sure about the mint. I think it might be ritual dyes. I was in their yarn club for a couple years and I think this was the birthstone color, and um, I got I got it because March is my birthday, and this was the aquamarine color. So I had this one in fingering weight, and I think I got it in DK. Okay. So that one is just like very squishy, hence the name Plumpy, and soothing to work on. I love doing brioche and garter. I mean, what else could you ask for if you're having a rough day? That's a very nice thing to pick up and work on. Okay, so that is all of my knitting for right now. Um, let me toss in right now my cross stitch finishes. So I piled up all my stuff out of order. Give me one second. Okay, the first project I have to show you, I think it's actually a start and finish. I don't think I had started this last time. This is uh, Strawberry Dream by Carriage House Samplings, 
and I started this for the Strawberry Moon Stitch Along that happened last month, that hosted by Marjorie, that Marjorie made, and I finished mine. So I used this 14 count, I think it's 14, yeah, 14 count um, Fiddler's Cloth, and I used all of the called for DMC. The only thing that I changed, I believe, is um, I didn't fill in this border. It's supposed to be filled in with white. And I just didn't think it needed it, so I didn't do it. Um, also, I didn't realize until I was stitching this that this is a red wing blackbird, which I thought was really cool because they're, those are really popular around here in the summertime. And I don't think I've ever seen one in a cross stitch pattern. So yeah, I love this. This was a market release this year. Uh, I think it was their only market release from Carriage House. And it was part of the um, Trudy's Kitchen, I think, series, which is uh, to honor Kathy and Marty Barrick's mom, Trudy. So there is a recipe on the back of this pattern for Trudy's um, strawberry shortcake, which I would really love to try. Yeah, it says this one is the third one in a series. So that was my first finish. I love this um, fiddler's cloth that I used. It was easy to stitch. I, I stitched this super quick too. I think it took me three or four days maybe. And then my other finish was a whip that I had started earlier this year, I think. I was working on a bunch of larger projects and I wanted something quick. so. I had started Warm Winter Woolens. Let's see, did I write down? Yeah, I started this at the end of April. And this one I had purchased online as a kit, like someone had kitted it up already, and um, it just had the, like, close to the exact amounts needed for each color instead of buying the full skeins for all the colors. And it came with this fabric, which is one of the printed ones. Like, there's, there's no modeling on the back, but there is on the front. And let me see if I have something I can behind this. There's my finish on Warm Winter Woolens. So the kit that I got had everything is DMC except for the brandied pears, which is the sheep rump color. So that is the only part that should be, um, that's the only part that's variegated on my version. And also, I did a little bit less of the snow that the sheep is standing on. So, I don't, I don't know what we're focusing on here. There's a lot more rows of white snow, and I just did a couple. I thought that was enough. But yeah, I love this. I also love the way they finished it in this, like, standing sign. But I don't know if that's something I can still find. Oh, it says the candle screen is from Sudbury House. Maybe I'll see if I can still find that, but otherwise it says it's just a 5x7 opening, so any 5x7 frames should be good. I think I used the same count fabric as the chart suggests, so I'm going to do a giveaway for this today. It's wildly out of season. I know it's Christmas in July and this is not Christmassy. It does have red and green and snow, so I guess it could be Christmassy if you want like a subtle Christmas. So if you would like to um, enter to win this, I will mail it to you anywhere in the world. Um, just please be 18 so that you can give me your address and don't use the words free or giveaway in your comment and uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and leave me a comment with the word winter we'll just do winter if you'd like to enter okay um, aside from that the only other thing that I have worked on is um, my Pisces by Nora Corbett. So this is my only whip besides the giant butterflies that I just started that I have worked on since last time. And where did I just put that board that I had?
here is where I am at. So I shared this on Instagram. Um, I changed my fish from using the teal colors in the dress to orange. I don't know why we're not focusing. There we go. So I just converted the colors myself. Like I lined up all of the tealy blues that were in the fish in order of like light to dark. And then I just found an analog for each one in this sort of reddish orange um, color. So I put up uh, a poll on Instagram asking if you thought I should do both of the fish orange or do one orange and one teal, which I think would be really pretty if I was only doing two fish. I would definitely do one of each color. But I'm worried if I do this one blue now that it will be unbalanced, you know, because the colors will be consistent through her dress and then over here and then also there's a Pisces sign at the top and some beads. So I don't want it to look like too heavy on one side and then just the one orange fish. So I think I'm going to do both orange and then I will still do, I will still do this um, stuff at the top in the blue. Um, I'm also, I'm not going to put the word Pisces on the bottom. So I haven't done any of the beads yet, but I have done all of the back stitch. Yeah, so I just have the other fish and then all of the beads. So this is the next one that I would like to finish. Um, and then let me just show you, since these are kind of already like this anyway. So I had all of these blues that were in the fish. And I just grabbed, I used my um, DMC color card, and these colors are sort of all over the place. There's like 948, 967, 3824, 3341, so they don't go like all in a row. Like on the blue side there's 3847, 3848, 3849. So these kind of jump around more, but they, I think they fade really well. So yeah. Um, the only other thing to mention about that is I don't have any orange beads. So I think I'm going to try to use the original colored beads on my orange fish. So it'll be an orange fish with some light blue beads and just see how that looks. I was uh, googling orange and blue fish to see if such a thing exists that has both colors and it totally does so it'll just be whatever fish those are that I found online that are legit because they're on the internet okay so in the spirit of jumping around in this video I am now going to talk about plans for this month um, I'm not really planning on any Christmas in July or Jolly July stitching um, I did though recently finished kitting up my Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. Um, so I can't remember. I think I showed this fabric. I don't know if I said what I was going to use it for though. Um, so sorry if I'm repeating myself. But I'm going to use my cut of This is Halloween from Witch's Garden Crafts. It is a 16 count Ada. And I was a little bit concerned because the orange splotches in this are kind of similar to this orange floss that's called for, but I think it's going to be fine. I also put up a poll for this on um, Instagram, and lots of people voted. Thank you if you thank you if you were one of them. But here are my colors, and I think it's going to work just fine on here. So that is all ready to go, and I'm planning on starting that with um, Alex from Salix Stitches, and I think Erin might be joining us. Um, not sure when exactly we're going to start that, but sometime soon, I think. And then, um, oh, the other thing I don't, I can't show you because it's only a digital pattern that hasn't started yet. It's the um, Monster House Mystery Stitch Along from Satsuma Street. So I will put the picture up here. I signed up for that and I am planning on joining. I think the first clue comes out July 12th or something like that. So uh, let me know if you're going to do that one. It looks like fun. 
I have another mystery stitch along from Satsuma Street that is a whip that I did not get very far on at all. So hopefully I'll do better on this one. Okay. So, um, now I think all I have to talk about is bring out your kits. Um, I'm so excited about this stitch along. Uh, I was sort of inspired by, you know, there are a handful of other YouTubers who talk about vintage kits sometimes. Cam the Stitcher is one of them. And then Elizabeth from Thread Gremlins, of course, with her clown. Um, and I had sort of been thinking about hosting something um, for vintage kits, and so the timing just worked out. I had messaged the Thread Gremlins, and they were already talking about expanding their cell from being just that one clown pattern to something larger, and so things just clicked. And um, yeah, I'm, I've been having a lot of fun seeing what everyone else is sharing. Some people have beautiful, gorgeous vintage kits, and some people have super quirky, fun vintage kits. There are several clowns have made an appearance. Um, so I just wanted to show you what I have. If you've been watching my channel, you will have seen some of these things before, but I'm gonna show them anyway. So, oh, I just closed the bag that was already open. So one of the bring out your kits whips that I have is this Wonder Art kit. I think it's just called Welcome. Um, I don't know if there's a date on here. But I know this is one where I had to sort my own colors. And I started this when my husband had surgery. <laughs> it was This was a waiting in the hospital stitch that I started. So it's a little bit chaotic and I didn't get very far. But I'm just using all the kit materials, and I like the 70s vibe, and then all the colors. This is one where you had to sort them. But there aren't that many, and they're not hard to tell which is which, so I just left them together and put them on this little binder ring. So this one is in my pile of things I would like to finish this year. So I think I might work on this one after I finish Pisces. And then... Another one that I have on the go already as a whip is this Leisure Arts Dreamsicles pattern. There's a whole series of these. This one's Rainbow Dreams. This is the only one that I have. And I just have a start on the face with the rosy apple cheeks. I think this one was also a sort your own. No, it wasn't. This one came. So the threads are sorted, but they're just on this piece of old paper. So um, the thread, I think the colors I've used so far, maybe, I pulled off and put on one of these um, plastic ones because I was worried that as soon as I tried to pull a thread off of that piece of paper, it would just tear. So I guess maybe I haven't used any of the, these colors yet, and I, that's why I haven't transferred it. Anyhow, um, I will definitely be working on that one again soon, and then I was going to show you some of the ones I have in stash. So, I have this, um, what's it called? It's just called Ice Skating, and there's like these little kids just falling down on the ice by the frozen up mill. This one you can see has like a full color chart and floss that I get to sort myself. And then I have this something special carousel unicorn. And this one has like fringe and it has some like em embroidery to make these flowers on the top. Like I don't know what exactly that is. Uh, so that will be fun to figure out. So this one is not just cross stitch. Can you see? It's like th some 3D elements to the stitching. Um, this one I showed recently. This was a more recent acquisition, I think. It's called Cactus Garden from Monarch Horizons. Oh, it's Janlin. This one's 1988. So I was planning on just doing the actual cactuses in the pots and not doing this, this background. So, not super dated. It does have the 
heavy backstitch style though. And then I have this sunset kit called Kitchen Delight. This one I saw, there are tons of these on eBay if you would like to get one for very reasonable prices for the most part, like 10 or $12, most of them. Um, and yeah, I just really love the colors and it's got the little clock, the cat looking at the clock. Um, I don't know what the year is for this one, but it's got, it's also got a bright color chart. So the color charts look nice, but they're not the best because most of the boxes don't have a symbol at all. It's just different colored squares. So if you wanted to make a working copy or if you have if, like a visual impairment, this chart might not be the best choice for you. And then the last one I wanted to show, I'm already planning on starting this one with my friend Kate from Making Things With String. This is a Needle Treasures kit with the, hum the Hummel Kids. There are a bunch of these. I've also seen them from different companies. Like, I have a Needle Treasures one, but I think I've seen them from, um, like, under other, under, under other brand names as well. This one is called Stormy Weather, and this is the only one I have, but there are a bunch. There's another one with these two kids, and it's, like, Sunny Weather, and they have their umbrella, and then there's a ton of other ones, too. So I don't remember which one Kate has, but her and I were planning on starting this sometime. Um, so that will just be, you know, a separate vintage kit sale. But I wanted to show it because I love these. And there are tons of these on eBay too. Um, okay, I think all I have left is I have a little bit of haul. Uh, so if you're not here for the haul, thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time. If you are, I just have a few things. Um, I got my June fabric of the month from Be Stitch Me. So if you haven't gotten yours and you don't want to see it, look away now. Um, here, I'll show you the name of the color. I get the 18 count Ada, and it's in the plastic, so sorry about that. But um, that's what the color looks like. And then I was totally inspired by Erin at the Hathaway Stitchers. She recently got this chart, and so I also got it, the Prairie School Nevermore. I like that the a lot of these Prairie Schooler charts have like the big, the big thing, and then also some little ones. So this one has those smalls that you can do too, and instructions on how to finish them. I got um, Blackbird by Blackbird Designs, which is one of the Beatles patterns. Um, I also have Strawberry Fields in my collection. I haven't started either of them yet. I don't remember why I got this. I just wanted to. And I got my Just Cross Stitch Halloween. Um, I'm actually confused about this because I thought that I had read that if you have a subscription you don't get the Halloween issue. So I thought I saw like on Instagram if you're a subscriber you still need to place a separate order for this one but this one just showed up. I didn't order it. So I don't know if that's always the case, or if I just got mixed up, but I'm not going to do a flip through. Um, but there are a lot of cute charts in here, and fun designers. Um, this one, I think, is Marumi Designs, right? Yes. This one is by Miriam of Marumi Designs. And I love it. You could do a bunch of different colors. Like, you could do a purple, green. I like the orange, too. Yeah. It's only two floss colors, so yeah, you could do a lot with this. Okay. Um, that is everything that I have to show you today. I can hear my toddler going nuts upstairs with my big kids who have been very kindly watching him for me. So I'm going to sign off here. Um, thank you for hanging out and happy stitching and I will see you next time.